Welcome to another edition of Grace Under Pressure, where my guests today are Adrian Gostick and Chester Elton. I'll tell you all about each of them in just a moment. Grace Under Pressure is that show that deals with what's too often dismissed as the soft stuff, the caring, the commitment we exert toward others. And when you do it from a leadership perspective, as you will definitely discover that both Chester and Adrian are, you do it with a common cause to bring people together to achieve good aims for good uh, results. Um, Chester and Adrian, welcome to Grace Under Pressure. So. Hey, thanks for the invite. We're deli delighted to be here. Thanks, John. No right. I want to tell folks a little bit about you. Uh, Chester and Adrian are among the world's most influential voices in work uh, place trends, at least that's what their bio says. They have spent more than two decades building a rich clientele. They provide solutions for leaders and their work is supported by research, more than 1 million working adults toward the country. So not only are they entertaining to listen to, their, re their research speaks for itself. They're the founder of The Culture Works, a global consultancy, and the authors of multiple, multiple award-winning and number one Wall Street Journal and New York Times bestsellers, including All In, The Carrot Principle, Leading with Gratitude, and Anxiety at Work. And their books have sold more than 1.5 million copies in 30 different languages. Um, they're both key members, founding members, of Marshall Goldsmith 100 Coaches, and I am proud to call each of them a friend. Uh, Chester and Adrian, welcome to Grace Under Pressure. Yeah, thanks, John. You know, it's always fun to spend time with you. You know, Adrian and I have been friends with you for a long time. So mm -hmm. anything you're talking about, we want to listen. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm here to talk about your brand new book, which is called The Gratitude Habit. It's a 90 day journal. So let's dive in. You wrote a very successful book about gratitude, leading with gratitude. So what led you to want to write it in a journal form? Chester, why don't you go first? Yeah, sure. You know, um, I, I'm a big journaler and have been for a long time. I've got over 40 journals that I started journaling when I was in high school. And, you know, I, I served a mission for my church in Southern Italy and I journaled all through those years. And, and Adrian and I, you know, as you've mentioned, have written lots of books on gratitude and leadership. And so along with my journals, I was getting these uh, gratitude journals off of uh, Amazon. And they were kind of fun and we're doing it. And at a certain point, I called Adrian and said, we're the apostles of appreciation, the gurus of gratitude, you know, the Dalai Lamas of workplace trauma. How do we not have our own journal? And so uh, we came up with this idea of a 90-day journal uh, that you start the day and end the day with gratitude. And and we started to collaborate on this. And anybody who knows us very well knows that we collaborate on ideas. But Adrian's the writer. So when it came to, like, actually writing words in the journal, <laughs> that, that's where uh, Adrian came in. So that's my story. Adrian, what well, would you add to that? Well, what I'd kick in, too, is that, uh, you know, yeah, we said, look, you know, hey, we should write a journal. But more importantly, we saw what was missing in the journals that were out there. There are a lot of there's lots of great journals and that prompt you to think about things, but but really none that create this habit with with gratitude. We all know that we should be more grateful, but where is the journal that really helps you think morning and night about how you start your day with gratitude, how you end your day with gratitude, how you think about moments in your day that were really profound, the people that helped you. And so what we found, and we, we, we shared this, as John knows, with a lot of the 100 coaches, Marshall Goldsmith's uh, uh, network of people, and we had a lot of people give us feedback that helped us shape the journal, that really made it better, made it more useful. And really what we found is it's starting to change people li people's lives and make them think in more positive ways. You know, and, and to that point, Adrian, the other thing that we added in, John, that was a lot of fun is reflection. You know, you often write in your journals and never go back and read anything. You might go back and say, well, it was my, when my child was born or a birthday or whatever. So we built into the journal that every seven days you look back and then you write the, the highlights. And it's so interesting. Uh, you know, you travel a lot. We travel a lot. And this idea of looking back through the week, <coughs> excuse me, say, Man, you know, Monday I was in Seattle and Wednesday I was in San Francisco and whatever the you know, your your days get quick and, and, and you forget stuff. And that reflection 
we thought was really important, not only a seven day reflection, but a 30 day reflection. Again, as Adrian said, it's a habit. You get in the habit of writing and reflecting. And uh, the feedback so far has been, been very positive. We've been really pleased. I'm glad you emphasize the concept of reflection because uh, it's something I always try to, when I work with executives, try to challenge them to find this time. And the, as you know, um, we will get a pushback and go, reflection, who's got time for that? So I'm throwing that to you, Adrian. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I remember uh, Chester Elton c counseling a young Stephen Covey once and telling him, start with the end in mind, Stephen. And Stephen, hey, that's a good little, I, I, maybe that I'm not remembering that exactly how it worked out. But but yeah, Stephen Covey reminded us, you know, start with the end in mind, right? So so that's how we encourage you as you start this gratitude habit is start with thinking about your day. Think about you know, what will make it a great day. Think about what you're not only what you're grateful for, but what you're going to try and accomplish during the day. And then, uh, as Chester mentions, what we're asking you to do is every week and then every month is to look back through your journal to see are there trends? Are there some things that I should be more grateful for that maybe I've been missing? Um, maybe there's things that I'm over, you know, you know, grateful for every day that should be part of a practice. And do those people know that I'm grateful? Can I do more of those things that are lifting me up during the day? It's a really powerful practice as we start to reflect more uh, and, and stop living maybe just in the moment. Right. You know, John, the other thing that's really fun that we incorporated into the journal was in the evening practice is you said, like, you start the morning, what are three things that I'm grateful for? And often you, you have more than three, right? And at the end of the day, what are three things? And again, you can often have more than three. We inserted into the journal uh, one great lesson from today. So again, reflecting and say, what did I learn today? You know, you know this from your executive coaching and, and the things that you do is that, you know, really good leaders and people that really want to develop, they, they, they are curious and they're you know, they're learners, they're constantly um, developing new skills or, or new thoughts and, and, and so on. And so we thought that was really an important part of the evening reflection. What was one thing I learned today? And then lastly, and as Adrian said, we, we put out a little 30 day test journal to a bunch of people. We got some great feedback. And the one at the end was, who am I grateful for today? You know, who are the people that I'm, and, and just list those names. And it's really interesting to me that when I do it, I think, you know, it's, it's often my wife or family or friends, but you'll go to dinner with somebody and you'll say, I'm grateful for that. Or, you know, we've had a, a, maybe a Monday morning session with Marshall and there were a couple of things we learned and grateful for Marshall. In fact, I know you're a huge Marshall Goldsmith fan. So at the top of every evening page, we, we put fun quotes. You know, we like quotes. We quote Mother Teresa, we quote Adrian Gostick. I don't, I don't know that we ever quoted John Baldoni. I'm sure he's. In, I think it's page 113 somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's somewhere. But the first, the first day in the journal, we quote our friend Marshall Goldsmith, and I love the quote. It says, "Gratitude is not a limited resource, nor is it costly. It's abundant as air. We breathe it in, but forget to exhale." Just some really fun thoughts like that. That's great. Well, um, I, I want to challenge you, uh, Adrian, I'm gonna, uh, uh, because gratitude, you wrote, this is your this is journal, but you wrote a whole book leading with gratitude. Yeah. Um, gratitude is, we it's become au courant, we talk about it, but has it become, how do we avoid the concept of gratitude from becoming a buzzword? Yeah, no, it's a great question because, you know, when we started this work, we, we actually, it was a few years ago and we were sitting around with Marshall and, and Chester and I, and we, we were talking, isn't it interesting, all the executives that we get to coach, the one thing they typically forget as they move further in their careers and get higher up the ladder is to be grateful and how important that was when they were lower down in their careers. And that's why we started writing the book, Leading with Gratitude. And of course, Marshall wrote the forward for us and 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 sometimes we feel like ah, I can be overdone, right? Um, it can be cliche to be to be thankful. Well, you know what we typically ask is, well, who's ever worked at a place that was too thankful for you? It's like I can't get anything done around here. They're just thanking me all day long. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, of course not. No, and yet as senior leaders, that sometimes we go, oh, it can be tried, but it's not. 
I was just recently talking with the uh, CHRO of a multi-billion dollar company, a woman who makes seven figure salary. And she said, you know what I want at the end of the day? My boss, the CEO, to tell me I've done a good job. That's what I want. <laughs> you know, it's like with all the money in the world and all this, that is what she's looking for. And so I think it's always, you know, as we rise higher, we think, oh, it'll become trite or and it just doesn't. It is every human being needs to know that they're they're valued and they're making a difference. That's such an important point. And and I'm gonna throw it to you, Chester, because as you were trying, as Adrian was explaining, you know, when you're on the make, moving up, you're grateful to people who extend a helping hand. But when you're in that senior role, um, it's important to quote thank downward. Tell me about that. Well, yeah, you know, you think about the people that show up every day that work with and for you, and all the little things that they do that are never really acknowledged, and yet those are the little things, thousands of times they keep your business open. You know, so this habit, uh, and we love that the title, the gratitude habit, right? The more you do it, the better you get. The more you practice, the, the better you get. Is this idea of daily rituals and practices that says, hey, uh, who did I reach out to today? Who did I thank today? Who's who's doing that steady eddy stuff that keeps the doors open every day? And once you get into that habit, it creates a very safe environment for people to talk about ideas and innovations and 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 so on you know it's interesting in our latest uh, book um, right before we published the gratitude journal is is anxiety at work we talk about eight strategies <laughs> i love that book um um eight strategies and how to deal with anxiety in the workplace the eighth strategy is gratitude you know that you can't hold two emotions at the same time you can't be anxious and you can't be grateful so if you have your choice We'd say, don't choose anxiety, choose, you know, gratitude. And how do you make that choice every day? It's a habit. It's a ritual. And it's very, very helpful for mental health, as well as creating a really positive and, and engaging environment. Speaking of mental health and the book Anxiety um, is um, how do you prevent, and maybe if this has come up, has anyone challenged you? How do you prevent a journal from being obsessive? What I mean, what's what's the is it is it the concept behind it, i.e. gratitude? What's your perspective on that? You know, it's interesting as we we had one of our hundred coaches meetings after we gave this uh, journal to to many of the uh, of our peers who are CEOs and executive coaches to CEOs, et cetera. They're very busy people. And it's one of the uh, participants said, you know, she said, this was, I was very rigid. I did it every day. It made me feel great. She says, then the 30 days ended and I never thought about it again. And, <laughs> and, and so it was interesting is that this habit, you know, it takes longer to form in some people. There's this myth of what does it take three weeks or so to form a habit? No. In some people, it takes a lot longer. And, and like this person, you ask, hey, can it become habit or, or a ritual? Yeah. Um, but I would argue that after a time, it's going to become a positive habit, that it's going to be very good for you. Um, and of course, different things work for different people. But, you know, Chester, you talk about having a gratitude habit with you and your, you know, Heidi, your wife every night. Those are positive. You find out what works for you. This tool may be a tool that works for a lot of people, maybe not others, but find the ritual that's going to work for you to bring gratitude into your life every day. That's the point of this. Yeah. And here's the thing, John. <clears throat> you know, you talk about being obsessive. We looked at how do you develop a habit? And we often think that if I miss a day, I've got to go back to zero. That's not the case. If you miss a day, just go to the next day. In fact, at the top of the journal, we, we didn't put dates and months and, and so on. You fill it in. So it's it's March 12th, 2024. Well, uh, things may come up. I might get busy. I might not write tomorrow, but I might write the next day. Don't worry about missing a day. You know, just move to the next day and, and keep the habit flowing. So that was a big breakthrough as we looked at how you develop a habit. You don't have to be obsessive. Just make sure you do it. I think three to four times a week is, is, is plenty. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I thought you were going to say three or four times a day. That's probably yeah. obsessive, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's obsessive, right? That's a much thicker <laughs> journal. You know, we yeah. have. There, there's something in the word that you mentioned, uh, uh, Adrian, that uh, I think is very important to us as human beings, particularly 
in our world of globalism and travel and all these kinds of things. And we're pushed and pulled by time zones and, you know, whether we're, you know, communicating with someone in Asia or actually being in Asia or whatever it is, I think it's getting mixed up. But there's, and I, I know, Chester, you're root, uh, rootinized to this, I will say in a positive, to the concept of ritual. How does ritual work for you, Chester? So. Yeah, so I was first really introduced to ritual uh, by Marshall Goldsmith. He introduced me to the six basic questions that you uh, that you have every day. You know, did I do my best to set clear and concise goals? Did I do my best to you know, make progress towards those goals? Did I do my best to be happy? Anyway, there's six basic questions, and it was so funny. He had it on a on a grid, and he rates himself every day from one to ten. And um, he showed me his his grid. He says, "Here's the six basic questions," and then I added more to it. Well, he has like forty questions, <laughs> and I remember sitting to Marshall. I said. You should add a 41st question, and that is, why am I asking myself so many <laughs> questions every day? Now, the, the flip side is I've been doing it for a few years now, and I've got like 35 questions now. You know, you add things like, did I do my best to uh, uh, tell my wife how much I love her? Did I do my best to exercise, go for a walk, whatever? And so that uh, idea of a ritual really uh, took hold for me there. And it, and it helps me because I put on there, uh, did I do my best to write in my gratitude journal? Did I do my best to write in my journal? And again, giving myself, as you would say, John, a little grace that says, when I miss a day, uh, don't beat yourself up, just move to the next day. So it was Marshall that really introduced me into these habits. And then another dear friend of ours, Michael Bungay Stanier, who wrote The Coaching Habit, you know, the habit of asking good questions. In fact, we called him up and said, hey, we really like your title, The Coaching Habit. Would you mind if we called our journal, the gratitude journal. And he was delighted. The he gratitude said, habit, right. Oh, the gratitude habit. Yeah, the gratitude journal, the gratitude habit. And he said, yeah, no, listen, the coaching habit, the gratitude habit, it's the ultimate form of, you know, of honoring somebody you really appreciate by imitating their work. Sure. Now, uh, Adrian, a question for you is that we, the, the journal itself, the gratitude habit, um, is, is a form of reflection. And in there, you express gratitude, lessons learned, and gratitude for others. Have you gotten any feedback of what the others have benefited from, i.e. being, oh, I was, my husband is grateful to me or whatever. Any feedback on that? Oh. So. You know, and this is something, anybody who's been through any sort of therapy in their lives know that gratitude is is an important part of of your therapeutic process that there's a point where you turn and you reach outward because sometimes when we're going through a mental health issue um, we're very inwardly focused and so the idea is a, a skilled therapist will start to turn you outward you know so many people have helped you in your journey who are you grateful for and it opens people up and all of a sudden light starts coming into their world as they start realizing, oh my gosh, my coach back in high school had such a profound impact. That teacher who told me I could be whatever, that, uh, you know, my significant other, my, my, my parents, my children, et cetera. There are so many people who have brought light into my world that it's extremely powerful there. So as we've heard people reporting is that, yeah, this, this question about who am I grateful for each day has really helped them see whose shoulders they stand on and who lifts them up when they stumble. Good answer. Um, and speaking of that is that I, I think what you just said gives us perspective. So, and I like the way you said, standing on the shoulders of others. When you hear that, Chester, what does it mean to you? Oops, you're muted, Chess. <laughs> yeah, it, it, this is the first time I've ever done a video thing, actually. Um, <laughs> so I, I think the idea that I really uh, grew to appreciate, and this was a suggestion from someone who we had test the 30-day journal, was at the end of the day, who are the people that you're grateful for? And for me, that's one of the one of the nicest things for me at the end of the day is to write down the names of the people that I interacted with. For example, yesterday we were we were uh, taking some time in California to be with friends, and you know, three of my brothers are here with their wives, and then uh, my son Garrett showed up with his wife and our little three-year-old uh, grandson Forge, and then uh, one of my brother's uh, daughters showed up, Erin, and she showed up with her five kids, and 
it was this, this menagerie of little kids running all over the place. And, and at the end of the day, when I said, you know, that reflection on who are the people that I'm grateful for today, I, I loved that I ran off the page. You know, there were just so many people that had come into the day. And we, we went to the zoo and we had fun, you know, feeding the giraffes and um, just brings a smile to your face. And studies have shown, you know, when you end the day in a state of gratitude, you sleep a little better. You develop deeper relationships, and lots of good things happen. And as Adrian said, um, anxiety comes down. You know, it, it calms your soul. And so I love that um, reflection on the shoulders you stand on. Who are the people that you interact you know, with? That you that's a, I, I love that insight. And you know what's important about that is when you take that time to perspective, and it's an in to gain perspective. It's an inward journey. But it, when you're expressing gratitude, you're not alone. What does that say to you? Uh, I think you cut off at the end there. I'll, I'll start off there, John. Uh, you know, what does it mean? I mean, I'm sorry. I was talking about uh, gratitude being um, it's an inward. Expressing gratitude is an inward process. Yeah. However, when you put names to it, yeah. we feel less alone. It's so true. And this idea of community has become so important. I think if there's one thing the COVID pandemic proved to us is how important community is that we didn't even notice before. And, you know, it's just, just you talking about, you know, the power of family and friends coming over. And, and that community is so important to us. And yet, how often do we really reach out to those we, we've we've maybe lost contact with, those who are important to us at some point? Um, and that's what this journal has been has been very good for me as well as thinking back. I recently I just sent a note to one of my old high school friends, just saying, "Hey, I really appreciate you. And you were there when my my parents were aging, and you went to visit them." And I just and and he told me about how he'd gone through cancer recently, and I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't being thinking about how grateful I was for all he had done. You know, sometimes many years before or years before. And so it does bring us, like you said, John, out of ourselves and thinking, putting names to the gratitude that we have. It's a really powerful thing. But it also, I mean, there's a biological benefit too. It releases oxytocin within ourselves. It makes us uh, makes us feel better. Um, so it is really a feel better drug that we can use that's within us already. That's great. Now, taking a step back, I want to ask each of you, because I, Chester, on a call, you spoke, you two are business partners, writing partners, you've been together for 20 years or so, whatever, a couple of decades, and you spoke very eloquently about your partnership with Adrian. So I, I think a lot of people know your names and have read some of your stuff, but maybe not know enough about how do you work together? What do you gain from each other? I said, as writing partners or business partners, what's, what's the bounce on that, Chester? So. Yeah, no, thanks for that question, uh, John. Um, <clears throat> it's 25 years, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been um, a really a good run. Early on, Adrian and I decided that we would split everything 50-50. You know, Adrian is the writer. He does um, more than the bulk of the writing, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, we do collaborate on that. Adrian's the writer. We both speak. Sometimes Adrian speaks more than I do. Sometimes I speak more than he does. Um, but what we decided is that whatever revenue came into the business, we would just split it 50-50. And it's so funny, a, a, a dear friend from the 100 Coaches gave me a call just two days ago, and she was looking for advice. They said, our, our publisher said that we should write a book together, my partners. How do you work that? I said, look, just make it 50-50. And, and and don't worry about who's doing more or who's doing less. We have speaking because of the books. We get to write more books because of the speaking. We get to do more executive coaching because of the speaking and the books and the training. Just put it in one pot and it's worked really, really well for us. There's no ifs, buts, and jealousies. It's like, this is the partnership. We both bring our talents to the table. And because we have it, we've got this wonderful little business that we've been doing for 25 years now, which is, we should have like some kind of anniversary dinner or something. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. October, I think it was October of 99. I met Chester and I had, I just started as a uh, head of communications for this company. And, and one of my employees said to me, he says, uh, Hey, you're going to this big meeting of all our sales guys. You got to meet this Chester Elton guy. He'll change your life. 
and had no idea, had no idea then that, uh, yeah, he was prescient. Um, yeah, and, and I think Jess is right. Like, you know, a lot of people approach us about partnerships, and I've had different partnerships in the past too, where you kind of go, okay, pay me 20% of this, da, 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 and it always blows up. It always is a problem. It's always, you kind of, well, yeah, but it was only, I did this because of it, the, and there's always yeah buts. And, and so Jess is right. If you're going to have a partnership, Jim Cousins told us this, who Jim uh, Cousins and Barry Posner wrote uh, the Leadership Challenge. And, and, and Jim told me long ago, he says, look, if you're going to have a partnership, make it 50-50 because otherwise you're going to going to have issues. And, and boy, he was, he was right along the way. So, so yeah, that, that's been really good. And that way there's, there's no ego too. Like if Chester gets a speaking engagement, I go, hooray, <laughs> you know, I don't have to go give a, you know, go to Toledo. Um, nothing wrong with Toledo. Um, and if, you know, you know, if I'm doing a book, Chester says, hey, that's awesome. You know, we support each other because everything is equal. And also I think, you, you know the person you're getting in business with. I know Chester is a person of integrity. Um, you know, he's generous. He's good to a fault. Um, he's just a good, decent human being. So whoever you partner with, you know, make sure it's somebody that you would give your pin to. And Chess, by the way, has the pin to my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and here's, here's the thing. And I, uh, Adrian has told this story many times about, you know, you got to meet Chester to change your life. And what's wonderful about our partnership is how Adrian's changed my life, you know, made me appreciate really good writing and good thinking. And and one of the reasons I think our partnership works so well is we are very, very different people. And we appreciate that about ourselves. You know, it would be horrible if we were both me or both Adrian. It's wonderful that it's me and Adrian, right? It, it just works really well that way. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that insights into the partnership and the 50-50 split and the trust that evolves from there. So, gentlemen, as you know, I could talk to you guys for hours. Um, we're coming to near the end of our show, and you know I ask every guest a story about Grace. Um, do either or both of you have a story you'd like to sh about Grace you'd like to share? So. Uh, I'll jump in because Chess will probably have something better. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's you know, when people ask, "Hey, in 25 years, have you guys had disagreements or something?" It's like, I can remember maybe one or two times where, we, and again, you know, we've kind of kind of struggled through a tough issue or something. But what what I've understood is that you know, any time where I feel like, ah, oh, maybe I should have done that different. Chester always offers me grace. That's been really nice as a partners is, you know, to have somebody who says, yeah, I forgive it. It's all, we move on. And, you know, in 25 years, you're going to say some knuckleheaded stuff. You're going to do some things the other one doesn't agree with. But yeah, to be able to have a partner who just doesn't even remember it afterwards, that's, you know, that's what, I, you know, the first story of grace that comes to my mind. So yeah, thanks, Jess, for, for being that way. Yeah, that's very sweet. Thank you, Adrian. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, we, we speak at conferences, you know, all over the world, and, and you know, you can always be your your own harshest critic. You know, I, I, I spoke a little fireside just last night, and I wrote all this stuff up, and and they they really enjoyed it. And then at the end of it, ah, oh, geez, you know, I, these were two points that I really wanted to make, and I forgot to do it. You, you get caught up in the moment, and um, you know, we we I, I forget who taught us this, Adrian, but they said, you know, your audience doesn't know what they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you know what you wanted to say or should have said or could have said. They don't. So just take the applause, take the win, and, uh, yeah, and move, move on. Uh, in our podcast, Anxiety at Work, uh, we had a great bit of advice. Uh, one of the counselors said, you know, your inner voice can be your harshest critic. Do your best to make your inner voice your best friend. And that's giving yourself grace, right? When you beat yourself up, what would your best friend say? Your best friend would say, no, no, you were great. You're, you're being too hard on yourself. Did you see the audience? They loved it, you know. So a couple of, of grace notes there for you, John. Appreciate the question. Great. Well, Adrian Gostick and Chester Elton, you have shown grace to me, I will say, and I love the personalization <laughs> of grace that you show to each other. And I like the tip uh, about showing ourselves grace because we, we sometimes, uh, like every day, we can forget to do that. So Gentlemen, your newest book is The Gratitude Habit, a 90-day journal. Um, how can people find you? So, Go to uh, thecultureworks.com where, you know, there's everything that we've ever done. And, of course, pick up a book in your local bookstore or anywhere fine books are sold. And uh, the latest one is, yeah, The Gratitude Habit. 
Yeah. One last plug. We do have our book, Anxiety at Work, on this wonderful new platform called Lit Video Books. Treat yourself. They take your, your book and they make it into a 29-minute, high-quality, wonderful video. We're very high on that. So Gratitude Journal, Lit Video Books, Anxiety at Work. Thanks for the time, John. A pleasure. And with that, we'll go out.